now we turn to miracles. Well, what are miracles according to the um, to the presuppositional reformed apologists? Well, miracles for us or for them as a, uh, as a revelation by God. That's the portion we're on. In classical apologetics, once it is established that God exists and could do miracles, the historical evidence is the Bible may be fairly considered to determine whether God did in fact do miracles. So those, those are the two. Uh, in evidentialism, then, the evidence that miracles have occurred is uh, potent and may be part of or even the primary part of a case for the existence of God in the Bible. And so there's our classical and there's our evidentialist. But what does Reformed apologists say? Reformed apologists object to both approaches. I mean, just just sticky wickets in the mud. How, how dare, <laughs> I mean, it just seems like they're a, a distinctly different approach uh, in gotcha. all these cases. They do agree that one must be convinced that God exists in order to take the biblical miracle seriously. But they reject the idea of using an in inductive method to determine whether biblical miracles have occurred. Okay, so notice, for the most part, both the classical and the evidentialists uh, use miracles in the same way, right? And uh, the evidentialists, as you mentioned, uh, are stronger with regard to their use of, of miracles because they can suggest that miracles can do the whole heavy lifting, all of it. <laughs> right. Whereas the classicalist has this two-step approach, you prove that God exists, and then that miracle show that the Christian God is the one that uh, you should believe in, right? The evidentialist says, well, just by virtue of examining the facts for the miracles shows that the Christian God is exists right. and you should believe, right? right. Reform uh, apologetics is, is a little different than both of these. Mm -hmm. So for instance, for Clark, we need uh, revelation to know what God has done in history for us because the empirical study of history by itself cannot yield truth, right, or true knowledge. And for Van Til, we need revelation in order to have the proper worldview perspective from which to study history, right? So both apologists agree that since miracles are special acts of God in which he reveals himself and his purposes, one cannot really accept the biblical miracles for what they are without accepting the revelation of which they are an integral a part of. So you have to take bi um, biblical miracles in the whole uh, Christian worldview concept in order to uh, understand what's going on. Right, right. So if we talk about the holistic approach of presuppositional and reformed apologetics, this is what's being talked about, is that removing one uh, falters the other. It's, it's a foundation. You don't... If you're building a house, there's no part of the foundation where you're like, ah, you know what? I don't really need that part of it. So let's right. let's cut it out. <laughs> and so we can be impressed by uh, by those that just had the fr first five books of Moses, but also they had uh, direct revelation from God in there. Now we have 66 books and we have a, a great foundation. Uh, and then it's built upon the the apostles and the disciples, the, 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 um, the 2000 years of church history now. And so, uh, you know, we're even more blessed, even if we don't have Jesus, uh, you know, uh, feeding us and 5000 other people. <laughs> well, according to Van Til, the real underlying reason non Christians object to the biblical miracles is they imply the existence of God. Right. <laughs> and that's a God who is sovereign over all of all natural laws and, and all fact, and therefore sovereign over them. Mm. The biblical miracles are presupposed that something is wrong with the human condition, sin, and that God is acting to correct it in extraordinary ways through redemption. Thus are uh, they are thus an affront to non-Christians. Right. So, you know, you, you, you have um, you have God. Uh, um, uh, Send a flood. You have him uh, raise Jesus from the dead. Uh, you have him uh, write the unbeliever's name uh, on the moon. Well, all those things have to be denied because God can exist, and I hate him for it. So right. <laughs> yeah. uh, so reformed apologists then also criticize the traditional historical argument for the resurrection of Jesus, and typically offer at least two related criticisms of this particular historical argument for the re uh, resurrection of Jesus. First. They argue that the historical argument, insofar as it seeks to prove the resurrection without presupposing the truth of Christianity, is fallacious, right? It's just, uh, it's not a good argument. Uh, for example, no matter how perverse or uh, the biblical text is, oh, I'm sorry, 
Uh, for example, no matter how preserved the biblical text is or how soon it was written after the events that it reports, the skeptic, notice, is only being consistent in rejecting its reliability when it reports miracles uh, such as Jesus' resurrection, because they don't believe that miracles can happen. And so it doesn't matter when it was written or how much evidence we have for when it was written or how soon it was written after the supposed event happened. If you don't believe in miracles, then you're consistent in rejecting the reliability of a report of miracles, right? So that's the first problem. Right. The second problem is that reformed apologists argue that skeptic, uh, that the skeptic always agrees that Jesus may have risen from the dead, but then suggests that it doesn't prove that he is God incarnate, right? Uh, in, the, in the world of random acts, of, of universes coming into existence, of fish turning into princes, or of fish to frogs to princes, uh, you know, what's another guy who rises from the dead? It just, it just... So happens. Yes, it's rare. Uh, in fact, this might be the only case, but he is God from there. All right. So he called it. But so what? Uh, you know, uh, uh, I, I expect to win the lottery. And if I do, does that mean that I'm God? So. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think uh, Van Til makes an argument about, uh, you know, the uh, unbeliever who says, oh, wow. Well, if that happened, let's report it to Wrigley's Believe It or Not. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Well, the only way out of this apologetic nightmare, according to Van Til, is to challenge the unbeliever's philosophy of fact and to present the resurrection, along with all other facts, as meaningful only in the context of Christian theism. What what uh, what worldview has uh, the 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 best explanation for a man who claims to be God to uh, and and said that he would rise from the dead, and he did? What, what uh, by what by what context? Uh, are we able to make uh, the the sense of of this uh, of these facts? All right, so that's miracles and the kind of uh, the reformed approach towards uh, arguments with regard to miracles. 